In this lesson, we're going to look at King Zedekiah, a very wicked king of Judah. And he did much evil in the sight of the Lord. And I want to look at his life and learn from his mistakes. The best thing you can do is look at these people in the Bible and learn from their mistakes. So 2 Kings chapter 24 and verse 17. Number one, we need to remember God while we're young, which is something that Zedekiah doesn't do. In 2 Kings 24, 18, it says Zedekiah was 20 and 1 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. So Zedekiah was 21 years old when he began to reign. So he was just a young man, a young king. And Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 1 says, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. So many young people around this age have good jobs with a good income. They already have a nice house, a nice car, and they forget about the Lord. You forget about the Lord when you get all this stuff. And they're taking these things for granted and are choosing the pleasures of sin that only last for a season. As Hebrews 11.25 talks about how the pleasures of sin only last for a season. And then Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 9 says, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things... God will bring thee into judgment. So you can go do what you want to do, live how you want to live, and do all the bad things your heart desires, but everything you do, you're going to have to give an account for it. And if you get in the habit of choosing God over sin while you're young, then you'll reap good things when you get old. So remember God when you're young. Zedekiah didn't realize this, and look what he says in 2 Kings 24:19. Or look what the Bible says in Second Kings twenty four nineteen. It says, And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. So he didn't even he didn't learn from people in the past. He, so he didn't learn from people. He didn't learn from people's mistakes. He didn't realize that he needs to remember his Creator in the days of his youth, and he did much evil in the sight of the Lord. And that leads us to our next point. Number two, do what is pleasing in God's sight. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, so we need to do what's pleasing in God's sight. Zed did evil in the sight of the Lord. We need to do good. Colossians 1.10 says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So walk worthy to the Lord and to all pleasing. Colossians 3.20 Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Revelation 4.11 Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. That's the meaning of life, to please the Lord, to give Him pleasure. Now, 2 Kings 24.20 says, For through the anger of the Lord it came to pass in Jerusalem and Judah, until he had cast them out from his presence, that Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. And then 2 Kings 25.4 says, And the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled by night by the way of the gate between two walls, which is by the king's garden. Now, the Chaldees were against the city round about, and the king went the way toward the plain. So notice the soldiers fled by night. And Zed thought he was strong and had an army, but pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. They just left him. And since he wasn't right with the Lord, he had nobody. And if you have the Lord on your side, then that's all you need. If you have the Lord on your side, then it, it can be just yourself and the Lord against 10,000 enemies because it wouldn't be fair any other way. And it still ain't fair because if God be for you, then who can be against you? So if it's just you against 10,000 enemies and you have the Lord, you're on the winning side. But he, the people fled by night 
The men of war fled by night. Zedekiah was 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 by himself. And he was a rebel. He rebelled against God. He rebelled against the king of Babylon. And notice point number three. Remember your sin is going to catch up to you. 2 Kings 25 5 says, And the army of the Chaldees pursued after the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho, and all his army were scattered from him. So picture that army of the Chaldees as your sin. You've been playing with it, and the tables have turned. Instead of it bringing you pleasure, it's bringing you pain and heartache. And Numbers 20, or Numbers 32 23 says, but if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Your sin's going to catch up to you. James 1, 14 and 15. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. death. If you live for the flesh, ye shall die. She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And notice that Zedekiah was running. And that shows me that he thought he could get away. And right now, while you're in your sin, it's pleasurable. You think you're getting away with it. You think nobody knows about it. But soon the sin will have its claws wrapped around you. Now, Second Kings 25, 6. So they took the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon, to Riblah, and they gave judgment upon him. So they gave judgment upon him. And R.G. Lee, the great preacher, said, There is going to be a payday someday. Someday you'll see the judgment of God. Hebrews 9.27 says, And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. Uh, Romans 14.12 says, Then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. You're going to give account of the things that you do. Your sin is going to catch up with you, just like it did with Zedekiah. Now, number four, your sin affects your kids. Second Kings 25, 7 says, And they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, and put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and bound him with fetters of brass, and carried him to Babylon. So before they put his eyes out, they killed his sons before his eyes. They waited and did that second so that he could see his children get killed. So your sin affects your kids. The life you live in front of your kids greatly affects how they're going to live their life. If they see you cussing and lying and cheating and manipulating and stealing, then they're going to do the same things. If they hear you listening to wicked stuff on Pandora Radio, they'll listen to that and then much more, much worse when they become a teenager. And in a sense... You're killing your kids slowly. You're making it less likely for them to get to God. You're making it less likely for them to live a holy life. And Zedekiah's wicked life ended up with him seeing his kids killed before his eyes. So you ought to train up a child in the way he should go. We can't blame our failures on our fathers, but many men end up failing because of how their fathers led them. For example, my great or my grandfather turned my dad and uncle into drunks before they were teenagers. My dad died a drunk. Uh, we have a responsibility to our kids to live a clean life in front of them. The next thing I want to point out, number five, is sin binds and it blinds. Second Kings 25, 7, And they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes and put out the eyes of Zedekiah and bound him with fetters of brass and carried him to Babylon. So notice in the Bible that sin leads to blindness. The angels in Sodom smote the Sodomites with blindness, Genesis 19:11, and they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. So if you stay in sin, and if you're not saved, you'll weary yourself to find the door. Jesus is the door. Sin keeps you occupied so that you end up loving it so much that you don't want to come to Jesus Christ. Judges 16.21 talks about how the Philistines put out the eyes of Samson. 
sin blinds. They took Zedekiah and plucked his eyeballs. This is where you get the saying, they knocked his lights out because the light of the body is the eye. And they plucked his eyeballs out. They bound him with fetters and chains, sin binds. And that is where rebellion against God will lead you. You think you're in control, and then it's in control of you. Whatever your sin is will become your addiction, it's, and it, it'll it almost seem impossible to stop, like you're chained by it. But let's look at something that led to Zedekiah being an outright rebel. One of those things is he wouldn't listen to the preacher. Second Chronicles 36.12 says, And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God, and humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from the mouth of the Lord. He didn't like Jeremiah because Jeremiah spoke the words of God. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. They don't want to come to the light lest their deeds be reproved. Uh, Paul told Timothy to preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Repro reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Uh, you have to reprove and rebuke. But Zed didn't like for Jeremiah to preach the word. He probably shook the building when he preached like Jonathan Edwards preaching sinners in the hands of an angry God and had the people hanging on to the pews or like R.G. Lee's Payday Someday, as I mentioned earlier, or like Danny Castle, Six Surprises, Wedding in Hell, that makes you feel hell, or like Donnie Dalton's Hell Hath Enlarged Itself sermon, or like Phil Kidd when he preached Nobody's Laughing in Hell. That's probably how, how Jeremiah preached, that put, put so much fear of God in people. Ezekiel 25, 6 talks about how Ezekiel clapped with his hands and stomped with his feet and that's probably what Jeremiah did when he was preaching but Zed hated his preaching so much that he put him in prison and Zed had a bad spirit and he didn't like the Bible preaching Jeremiah 32 3 through 4 says for Zedekiah king of Judah had shut him up had shut Jeremiah up saying, Wherefore dost thou prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. And Zedekiah king of Judah shall not escape out of the hand of the Chaldeans, but shall surely be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon, and shall speak with him mouth to mouth, and his eyes shall behold his eyes. So that's what Jeremiah told Zedekiah. That's a negative message from God's prophet and people hate that negative message but the Bible's a negative book uh, things it's not a big fairy tale where you can just go do what you want to and live happily ever after there's consequences for sin but Zed didn't like that message he wanted a preacher that would tickle his ears he wanted he wanted to heap to himself teachers having itching ears just like people in the last days of the church age. And another thing that led to Zedekiah's rebellion, what could it be? What led to his continual rebellion until his death? That's a continual rejection of the truth. Second Chronicles 36.13 says, And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who made him swear by God, but he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from turning into the Lord God of Israel. So the Bible warns about getting this hard heart that Zedekiah has. He, he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart. Just like Pharaoh hardened his own heart because he rejected the truth over and over. So the Lord hardens his heart. God always gives a man a choice and an option to choose the right way before he steps in and gives an even bigger strong delusion. But Proverbs 29 1 says, He that being often reproved and hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. And then Romans 2 4 through 6 says, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? See, God is long suffering. 
And He wants you to come to repentance. But verse 5 says, But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. So Zed was a hard-hearted, stiff-necked, Word of God rejecting sinner. He hated God's prophet, and he hated what he had to say. And the more you keep rejecting the truth, the more you'll get deceived. The more you reject light from the Word, the less it's going to be presented, the less you're going to care about it. But the last thing I'm going to say about Zedekiah is that he is proof that you reap what you sow. In Jeremiah 52.11, it says, Then he put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and the king of Babylon bound him in chains and carried him to Babylon and put him in prison till the day of his death. So he put, uh, Zedekiah put Jeremiah in prison, and then he ends up in prison himself. The Antichrist in the tribulation kills with the sword, so he, he must be killed with the sword. You reap what you sow. Galatians 6, 7, and 8 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he, shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit, shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Zedekiah died in prison. He died chained up. And a lot of people die chained up by the world, the flesh and the devil. The way of the transgressor is hard. But you don't want to have Zedekiah Kaya's fate that he had. If you're not saved, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul gives us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, and he said that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So Jesus Christ died. He died for your sins. That's why you needed him to die. That's why you need a Savior is because you're a sinner. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Jesus Christ shed His blood for every one of the sins you've ever committed. And if you, will, if you would like to be saved, all you have to do is come to Jesus Christ as that guilty sinner that you are and put your trust on the Lord Jesus Christ and His shed blood to be your payment for sin. Quit relying on your own goodness and your own good things that you're doing to get you to heaven because you'll never be good enough to get to heaven. You have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and His what He did on the cross will pay for your sin. The Bible says in Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It says in Romans 10.13, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you want to be saved, just come to Jesus Christ right now and say, Lord, I know you died for me. I know that I'm a sinner. And I know that you shed your blood for all those sins I've committed. And I'm calling on you. And I'm going to rely on you alone to save me from sin. And get me to heaven when I die. Just come to him the best way you know how. And believe on him. Call on him before it's too late. And you can be saved and have eternal life.